Hey Phoenix fam, what's poppin? In today's video, we're gonna talk about hard cases. Why would you need a hard case in Airsoft and what are your different options? We also gonna talk about the perfect solution on how to travel to the Airsoft field. In today's video, we're gonna find out which size is the best for you. Oh, Jesus. You have two options when it comes to transporting your airsoft replica to the airsoft field. Either like an old school classic soft bag or a hard case. The box your replica comes in is not a way on how to transport after you opened it. There are really strict rules here in Germany on how to transport your airsoft replica and everyone interested in airsoft should take them very seriously. So please inform yourself about the rules in your country but they should be really similar or even identical. First of all, never ever take your replica into public if it is not a designated airsoft area or a dealer. No carnival, no Halloween, no nothing. And transportation to a Fiat has to be in a very specific way. It has to be in a locked, non-see-through container. Usually a weapons case that can be locked with a padlock on the side is the go-to. The battery should be disconnected and the magazine ejected. It even should be stored like that in your mom's basement. It has to be ensured the entire time you're traveling that quick access is not possible. If you're standing somewhere, it can't fall out of your backpack, it can't fall out of the case because it's locked. It's not easily available in a quick matter of time. That is very important. And it can't fall out of your bag while you're at the rest stop, having your poop before the game and Karen is watching you because you look kind of suspicious. So for that purpose of transportation, soft bags are kind of cheap and they work, but they have one fatal flaw because if you throw this in the trunk of your car and then something else gets dropped on it, doesn't look so good. For me, the only pro of a soft bag is that it's kind of compact. But if you transport more than one replica, they kind of get really smashed into each other. Here you will get scratches on the body and maybe even a broken accessory. An overfilled bag like this can also get damaged because it's just too dang full and it's freaking heavy. It's not made to hold like two big replicas and three handguns or whatever it's in here right now. Just think about the price you paid for the replica and then maybe think about, ah, is this like a sufficient way to bring it to the SF game or do I want to protect it a little better because I actually spent kind of a, almost a fortune on it. Then there are hard cases. Usually a lot of people tend to go to the soft bags because they're just cheaper, but they offer a lot less protection and customization. Or they go with very cheap hard cases that maybe offer almost no functionality and are very soft in the plastic. So they're actually not really hard cases. Here, Nimrod Tactical stepped in is now offering an affordable hard case that is not only really functional, customizable, and is a really hard shell, but you can also fly with this. So let's talk about the Nimrod Tactical hard cases. First of all, they come in two different sizes. This one is the 100 centimeter one. It's already kind of big, as you can see. And this is perfect for SMGs or for one AG and your backup, way more compact. And then there is the 136 centimeter one, which is freaking giant. And this would be perfect. Look at this. Uh, it doesn't even fit on the screen. And this would be perfect for an LMG, for a long sniper rifle, or for multiple AEGs, plus your little pistols. This is nuts. Oh, this is a huge guy. They are made from hmm. plastic. So your replicas are protected from rain and dust by a rubber seal that goes all the way around. Great for being outside on the field, little rain, doesn't hurt your replica, and for playing in the desert, no dust in your hop-up chamber. They even offer a little air release seal, which makes them easier to open because it might be sucked into a vacuum in there. Or if you want to fly, you can just pop this puppy open and it lets air through 
uh, so they don't get like too compressed and you can open them easily. The case offers multiple buckets that makes the hard case stay closed and these buckles are hard which is perfect because if you want to fly you cannot get a hand in between here. Then it offers two slots to actually lock the hard case with a padlock. Here obviously I recommend a num lock where you just put in a little number. So no forgetting your key at home and you have to ask your buddy with the bolt cutters to open up your case. Quick tip on the side, you can also store valuable items in here while you're on the game field and lock them up in here if you're not leaving them in your car. For example, your car keys or whatever you don't want to lose on the game field, you can just put them in here and lock them. Then you've probably seen these grooves on the top here before and there's the adjacent on the bottom. And that actually is a design so they lock into place on the one below. I'm gonna make them lock in place so you can easily uh, stack them and they're not gonna slide off of each other. Of course, which is a huge bonus, you can see here on the bottom, they have two wheels, which makes it really easy to carry your replicas to your car and then to the staging area, which is really nice. I don't want to carry a lot like on my back when I know that I'm going to run around all day anyways. I'm a huge fan of rollable suitcases and this is why my gear bag is actually a rollable suitcase. So I can just have this rolling behind me and my gear bag rolling behind me and yeah, everyone else is like carrying really hard and I'm just like, yeah, pretty chill. Let's open this puppy up for the first time. Inside you will find, yep, two different kinds of foam. Can you even see me? So on the inside we have two different kinds of foams. One is this wave foam that is here on the top. And then on the bottom we have the pick and plug. Multiple layers of protection for your airsoft replica. You can see there's two layers in here plus a third bottom layer. So what is the difference and what is better? all waveform, all pick and plug. Actually, it depends on what you're trying to do. You can get this case configured waveform here, waveform here if you desire. What is the pro for having a case completely in waveform? It's great if you have a lot of different setups and you always want to bring your different setups to the game field. Sometimes some CQB pistols, sometimes an SMG, maybe another time an AG and a backup, and then at some point an LMG, for example. It requires no setup time. You just throw everything in you want to take and it's going to be compressed on two layers of waveform if you close it up. But a little con of this system is actually that if you have a smaller item in between your replica for example because if it's smaller it might not get so compressed so it could actually fly around in the little gaps in between the compression. It could scratch up your replica, it looks way more messy and if you open stuff up something could fall out. And this is where the pick and plug comes in. It's a little bit more work but in the end you will have a way better system. This is a foam system that can be perfectly customized to your perfect needs. It looks very organized once set up and it offers the best protection to your items. Actually what it is, it's a grid of little foam pillars that are connected just a tiny little bit so you can actually pull them apart from each other and with that unplugging them and creating your perfect layout of your preferred replica setup. What's the con on the pick and plug? Obviously it might hold actually less than if you have it all in waveform as you cannot overcrowd it that much as it is set up for one specific item and the, the shape of the item. Maybe you can fit the same model or a similar replica but usually it's only for one setup one sheet of foam. A little side note, if you lay down your, for example, sniper rifle in one of those uh, cases, usually we open up the case and we lay down the replica that it's facing us. This is how it looks the best. But that actually means that if I pick up the case here, that means the scope is pointing towards the ground. And if I hit it or it falls down, it would be the first thing that it, the case would bump against the scope. So maybe if you want to take no chances and be really careful about your stuff, rotate it. It looks a little weird, but have the scope on the side where your handle is. Guys, so let's go through the process of setting up this pick and plug for my preferred 
set up. First step would be to line everything up on how you want to have it. Play around a little bit and place some mags in there too. Once you decided on the layout, you have actually two options. First would be to trace around with a Sharpie marker to mark everything, take everything out and then unplug the little plugs that are inside your lines to perfectly made a cutout for your replica. The other way would be to have a place how you want it and then start plucking just underneath and just work your way around until your replica basically falls inside. If you don't wanna have any Sharpie marks showing later on for the pieces you didn't plug, just flip your layout around because if you will flip the foam later on, the whole layout will be mirrored and you're gonna be good to go with no Sharpie marks on the top because they're gonna be on the bottom. What I mean with that is if you have, this is the layout you wanna have it, actually flip it around, then trace it. And once you flip the foam around upside down, this is gonna be in that direction. And then I also have a little curing tip for you later that's gonna give a little bit more structure to the foam, especially over time, that it doesn't come undone so easily and it will also hide the Sharpie markings. Basically, now it's time to find a preferred setup. So guys, give, to just give you a little overview, this is the 100 centimeter uh, case and I, just threw some stuff in there to see how much it would hold. So here you could easily get away with two main replicas, AEGs, and then I even threw in a pistol here on the side. But yeah, and then there could be attachment right here, maybe a red dot could go there. But overall, that could make the overall shape of the pick and plug foam a little bit instable. Of course, it would be best to have this set up to exactly one replica. We could go maybe something with this, something like this here, maybe the SSP here over like that. Then we take the red dot out. Then we have space here for to also maybe place the uh, scope over here. And then this is the suppressor. The suppressor could go here. And then here we even would have space for some mags. We could try that out. Oh, maybe, oh yeah, this, I like this way more. Maybe something like that. These mags, obviously they don't have to go in like that. They could also go in that way, yeah. Height would definitely make that possible. So they could go in like this. I would just adjust it how, how I want it and then go ahead and Sharpie mark it around or just start plucking right here underneath to make them undone. Let's see, it's pretty easy. You can even hear it. And then you just pull them out, just like that. One more time to show you guys. These are the buckles and they're sometimes really hard. Pull them up, up, and then you can open the case. And this is the 136 centimeter case and this is just huge because if you just lay a normal AG in here you could see how much more space you have. This is kind of nuts. This is like really good for a very long sniper rifle, LMG or what we could do is do a super multiple loadout. If you're bringing some friends, if you always want to have a backup with you, you could easily do this. One here, one here and even a side up. Let's assemble this a little bit more. This fits in there perfectly. So I'm making sure that if I place the items that I have at least one row of foam going around. Better would be actually two to give it more stability, but I just wanna show you now of how much stuff actually would fit in. Obviously I overcrowded it a little bit because this is not gonna be very functional. If you take it out, the foam wouldn't be very stable, which is definitely a con of the pick and plug. If that would be waveform, you could just throw all of this in, but this would fly around because it wouldn't get compressed too much down. Same goes with the, probably with the little red dot or this, it would just like slide around in between these because this is way higher and this is way higher. 
this could move around. But this is how much could fit in there, just to give you a little overview. If you are struggling in between, should I take the small one or the big one? This would be a way more accurate layout if you want to take the big case for your main rifle setup and for your backup. So this is a little bit of a longer rifle, not like the Mark 18. And then you have like maybe a scope or you have a sniper here, then a suppressor on the side, maybe a red dot that could go in like this. And then here on the side, you have your main backup with some magazines. Uh, there would be even like place for some other mags here or on the bottom. But this would be a good layout for the big case if you want to bring your primary and your secondary in one bring it all case with attachments and magazines. What I always wanted to do is make a Norwich dedicated layout with the SSX-303 here and my backup, the SSP-18, which I really love. Now I'm just starting to experiment a little bit and if it comes to the edge, I'm trying to leave at least one row uh, on the edge so I have an outside protection layer, obviously. So yeah, and now it's just like trying out some different stuff. Maybe I think I want to have this a little bit more centered because the if you put the replica on one side and all the attachments on one side, then it could be very front or back heavy. So I'm just trying to get a feel for it, uh, do some layouts. Obviously, also you can bring stuff straight down, which you don't always have to lay it on one side. Keep that in mind. And then, yeah, it's just be a little creative and try to leave some spaces in between the items so your structure has some stability. Then, of course, if you're plugging and you plucked something wrong because, yeah, like I just did, I just plucked some out, but you actually want this as a structural wall, obviously super glue or hot glue is your best friend to make some little repairs on the go. And then obviously you could also make half deep pockets, maybe especially useful for magazines if you lay them flat. Just plug the foam in one block, cut them with scissors, put them in and then you have a half deep pocket. I would say let's just uh, try to figure this out and then plug. Okay, we're making a test if it would be possible to put the pistol mags of the SSX and the SSP in here standing up. Stand this in here, close this. Yeah, would work, would work. It goes a little bit into the top wave for foam, but it would work. So this is what we're gonna do. Major success already, look at this. I'm trying to get it out, but this Looks pretty good. Um, I found that the easiest way to do it actually is with a pen, have the thing on top of there, trace it and then press each uh, little piece down with the pen. That makes it actually really easy to make them undone and keep them kind of in shape. And if you have a look right here now, this looks pretty funny if I can get it undone. Yep, <laughs> this looks like a little foam. SSP18. How funny is that? Well, I think that worked flawlessly. Now make a little fit test. Oh, like a glove. Oh, beautiful. Did you guys see that? Uh, like a glove. Uh, this has to go. Just make some fitting tests, but this looks already awesome. And then keep these in case you want maybe later to do some half pockets or so. I have the SSX fitted in for the first time now and I see here this is still not really working. I have to get rid of a couple more foam blocks here. And but here, uh, maybe here, yeah. But it's kind of good that it's a little bit like snug in there. But here I need to do a little bit better job. So let's see here. Well, I do like it that it's like super snug in here. This is a little bit more loose, but it works, you know. Then the foam suppressors here, magazines in like that. 
I still don't know if that was the perfect idea. Maybe it's better to have them coming like that in the case because I'm a little scared that crushing it down, the magazine lips are gonna break off. And then here, the SSP, it just looks great. And it's so satisfying when this just goes in, flops in. Look at this, whoop, in, great. And then this is my foam SSP now. Pew, 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 pew. Let's get some foam kills with this one. Alrighty guys, next update. I worked a little bit more on this and here is the point I uh, unplugged it earlier. It looks horrible, but this would be a place where I'm gonna glue this back in place. This is gonna be fine. Same goes with here. I have one overplugged right there. And yeah, we're gonna glue that back on so we have this super satisfying look to our SSX. And this is all the foam that came out. <laughs> Looks kind of funny. But now I have some more pro tips for you guys to stabilize the foam a little better. And what we do is we use Plasti Dip or in this case a flüssig gummi spray, a rubber spray. What does it do? Well, it's going to help the structure of the actual foam. It will supply a rubber coating that is elastic over the foam and it's going to help it stay in place and not coming undone over time. Like if you jam your replica in there and you break off a little thing on a piece on the side and another piece the next game day, you know, sometimes it's a little bit of a hassle that these come undone over time. But we're going to tackle this with some rubber spray. I call this the curing session. We're going to take the foam out and we're going to spray the foam in multiple layers very evenly. Concentrate on the top layer first, wait a little bit after the first layer, spray a second layer, maybe a third. Also concentrate on the inner walls that they don't come undone. So we're going to spray on the inside of everything very carefully we, and we don't get too close because we don't want to overfill the foam with the rubber spray and have like a patchy look at the end. Also, if you haven't decided yet on an area that you didn't plug, for example, here, I have a big piece here. I could fit maybe a red dot over here. I will not spray this area so I can undo this foam later if I want to. If you have half deep pockets, so if you cut something out, cut them in half like that and put them back in, take these out now for the spraying, spray it and then put these in there by themselves because the structure of these is good enough. Let everything dry out and air out because it's gonna be stinky for a couple of hours, maybe overnight, maybe two days. And then we're gonna come back and have a look on how it actually looks and feels in the case. So we take out this and this is what we're gonna spray now. See, definitely here the top, a little wobbly, maybe could have moved everything a little bit down to have a little bit more structure here on the top, but it's on the ground. Guys, we are back and you should be left with a beautiful customized layout just for your needs. And you can see on the video very clearly where I sprayed the elastic rubber on the foam and where I left out some patches so I can plug them later. Here you can really tell if you push it now with your finger that there's an overall better structure and yeah, they kind of fuse a little bit together. Like the rubber is like giving not only this little point, it helps it grabbing onto their little foam neighbor a little better, which is awesome. But I definitely need to do more layers. This was only now two, three layers and I used like a third of the can, but I think for one case it should be one can per layout. You end up with a really good structural thing that helps protecting your favorite SF replica. Other than that, this stinks a lot, so definitely leave it outside. And I already figured this is falling out a lot, which is cool because you could probably change it yourself if you want to. But what I would do is I'm gonna slap some double-sided tape right here and then glue that into place so it doesn't fall out every time 
you lift up the case, which is a little annoying, but it gives you more possibilities for your own customization. So just put some hot glue or double-sided tape in there and you're good to go. Some additional tips of what I came across in my research for this video is what I've seen also is that people cut holes in here and then have a little strap attached and put their M4 Max here. This looked really interesting because this is kind of thick also, so they're going inside. Obviously, with the Max sticking out here, that wouldn't work for me, but maybe this is a little DIY project for you as well. Also, I saw a different video. Yeah, we have two layers of pick and plug foam and he glued the first layer on a thin plane of wood and attached two handles each on one side and then you could take out the entire top layer which had one layout and then underneath he had a second layout for magazines, uh, pistols that are just a little thinner than the usual AEG and yeah you can really customize these cases to, to your perfect needs and that guy crammed a lot of stuff in there which is awesome to see because yeah it's Actually what I like is like bring as much as possible and the least amount of footprint. Overall, I think the build quality of the Nimrod Tactical case is really awesome. I love the design that you can actually uh, stack them on top because I don't only have one. Then the buckles are really tight. Feels great too. Uh, you can see they really go hard and unbuckle themselves hard which is good they're not going to come undone when you throw them in the back of your trunk of your mom's car then the valve obviously if you're having troubles opening it up like the suction is a little bit too hard open this valve a little bit and you should be fine same goes with flying i think you guys know i'm a big fan of the little one i just love the compact size it's great it just fits in here in the frame but if you're in the market for a really big one for your favorite airsoft sniper rifle or your big LMG or you want to bring a lot of stuff at all times, definitely go with the big one. Both of the sizes should be able to fit in the car's trunk easily and if you get the same as your buddy with the grooves, they can stack on top of each other and they're not going to slide around in your car, which is awesome. A little interception from Future Phoenix. I'm actually giving away the big Nimrod Tactical hard case to one of you guys. All you gotta do in this giveaway is to hit the subscribe button and leave down in the comments what you would cram into this amazing case. Just leave a comment, whatever you would put in there, and then hit the subscribe button. Of course, I would appreciate a like, and then we're gonna gamble it away to one of you guys of the Phoenix fam, and I'm gonna hope you have a great day, have a great holidays, and I'm gonna see you soon. Thanks so much, guys. Other than that, I think that is pretty much it, and I am ready to go on the field. See you guys. <laughs>